The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here on Sammy Taramina, blog around the OAA, the host of the last three brain cells and the host between two minutes on Oriental Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on Oriental Television and also those watching on YouTube. I'll talk about this week. Of course, we are just got the underway. We're starting the um, boys' basketball season. Um, we're going to break that. We're going to break week one down, what teams are rolling right now, what teams are not. Um, also, start a girls' basketball season. Of course, the first games are this week. Um, and what teams are facing, the, the pressures coming into the year. Um, so, we're going to break those down as well. So, a lot to look at this week here on the podcast. Um Let's look at our main store here. Obviously, of course, it's the um, opening week of boys' basketball season. Um, some teams that looked really good. Some teams that didn't look good. Some teams that really haven't been tested. Um, others, you're going to know a lot about them this week. And there's a lot of teams you got to know about. We'll know a lot about them after the end of the week. So, I think the best game of the day um, had to be Berkeley and Troy. I mean, that was a... That was a doozy over at the barn in um, Berkeley. Um, I think it was Steve Rhodes Court um, who played at Berkeley High School on um, Friday night. Um, Troy, everybody knows about Troy coming in. Of course, Troy's one of the favorites in the white this year. Um, they returned three very good proven players in Mason Parker, um, Chase Kuyper, and um, John Whiteside. Um, and then Berkeley, you know, they just lost to me, Rukovic. Um, you know, they... But Coach Joe Sermo was really optimistic about this team. Um, and there were some reasons why. I mean, there were some people that really questioned Berkeley after their um, 21-point loss at the hands of Novi, um, where they were just completely overwhelmed in that game. So, you know, coming to the game, a lot of storylines, a lot of subplots. Um, I knew Coach Gary Fralick, um was really concerned about that game. Um, obviously, playing at Berkeley, you know how... The rims can be a little bit shorter. Um, I mean, like the gym, you know what I mean? It can be a little, the rims can be a little bit lower. I mean, it's not like Oak Park, like, you know, obviously, of course, Oak Park, you know, obviously they have that dark gym, but you really look at, you know, in that game, I mean, there was a lot of, it was a really tight game throughout. Um, it was a really close game um, for both teams, and, you know, they went to overtime, um, and um, Berkeley ended up pulling up a big stunner, knocking off Troy 69-63, to 63. Um, and it was a crazy game because, you know, you look at the performances, um, obviously, uh, Berkeley side, um, you know, the way they play, um, credit to the Coach Joe Servo. I mean, like, He's got, I mean, like, getting that big win. I think that's a big confidence booster for for um, for Berkeley, especially when you look at the blue. Um, I think the blue this year is pretty much wide open considering what everything has gone on this week. Um, I mean, like, and, you know, another team, you know, we're going to talk about Pontiac in a couple minutes here. They're off to a really good start at 2-0. Um, um, could, they be a, could they be a force in that division? And... You really look at, you know, for Berkeley's side of things, you know, they got length, they got size. Um, they had a couple guys that came back to play this year. Um, and when you look at the makeup of Berkeley's team, I mean, I think they can be very competitive in this division. I mean, I know they haven't won a division title in a while. Um, they haven't. Um, they've been They've been playing really, really competitive ball. And... I think when you look at that matchup, um, clearly as day, um, I just think that, you know, I just think that, um, you know, for Berkeley bouncing back, um, a second game, uh, a second game is always an indicator where your team goes and, you know, and I think for Berkeley, um, this is a big win for them. Now, the question for me is with Berkeley, it always has been with them. Um, is can they sustain? Can they, can they sustain? Because they get hot early and then they struggle when they get, when the calendar turns. And, you know, and I think that's been a big problem for Coach Joe Thermo 
if he can keep this from not going on a down, downhill slope, then I think Berkeley's got a great chance to have a really nice year. I mean, I, I, I think so. I mean, like, the other district's brutal. I mean, it's interesting. I mean, it looks manageable with Oak Park and Groves in there, but I think with Berkeley, they got a shot to do well. I mean, they got a real shot to do really, really well and be competitive. Um, on the flip side for Troy, um, I think they're fine because obviously, you know, Mason Parker at 21 points. He had a dunk in that game. Chase Kuyper also had 21 points. That's 42 of your 63. Um, John Whiteside, he had nine points, which was mind-boggling considering, you know, how good, um, you know, those three have been. Um, I know they're getting two new starters in there. Um, so, you know, it's kind of like it's an interesting time for them trying to adjust. Um, so when you really look at Troy, I think they're fine. I mean, I'm not really pressing the panic button. I'm not pressing the, um, you know, with them. I mean, considering I think they're still the favorite in the white. Just considering, you know, you know, this might be a wake-up call for Coach Gary Fralick's team. I mean, I really do because... You know, obviously, you know how hard it is to be 22-0. and 0. I mean, it is hard, hard, hard to be 22-0. and 0. But, you know, to have some losses in there, you know, kind of humbles you. Um, you know, it's kind of it's kind of good to get everything like situated now. On uh, and but it's not it's not Mar it's not late February or early March, and that's kind of a good um good indicator to see where Troy's at, where they got to work at. Um, but I, I think Troy, in my opinion, they're fine. I mean, I'm not really pressing the panic button, and I don't think anybody at Colt Nation should press the panic button um, with the Colts. And I think right now with them, they're going to be fine. So that's my take on that game. Um, let's go now to the Pontiac. Um, Pontiac Pontiac's out to a 2-0 start. Um, Obviously, last year, this team really struggled. They won three games last year. Um, new coach and Andrew Myers taking over. Myers won assistant under Damon O'Neill when he was at Pontiac. Um, obviously, the play of J.J. Claudio has really st stood out for Pontiac. Um, albeit, you know, their two wins was against Southfield Christian and Hazel Park. Um, Hazel Park, obviously, has got a new coach and C.J. Goff taking over. Southfield Christian's not the same team they used to be. Um, but when I look at Pontiac, you know, they got some players. I mean, they got some proven players. I mean, like, um, yes, they're real underclassmen. Carter Letterwood's probably their only senior on that team. Um, but I'm telling you, I think Pontiac could be a team that I don't think anybody wants to see right now because of the way that they're playing right now. And I think for, for coach Myers, that's a good start. Obviously having their new gym at side green gym. Um, with everything all renovated and all, they got new bleachers there, new scoreboards there. Um, basically, um, you know, it's basically like a brand new gym over at Pontiac and, you know, you see the, um, and they're right now performing at a high level right now. And, you know, that's a good sign going forward for Pontiac considering, you know, we got the, um, KLA OA challenge coming up in about a couple days, which is going to be really interesting to see. Pontiac, of course, got a really interesting match at Wayne Memorial, um, which looks very winnable for them. So I think when you look at Pontiac, their situation right now, they're trending up right now. I really think that this team right now, with the way that they're built, um, J.J. Claudio starting to emerge as a star. They got other proven players as well um, that are starting to emerge as well. Um I think Pontiac could more than triple their win total. I think they, there's a good chance here. I could see Pontiac maybe winning maybe at least 10, at least 12, 13 games with that schedule. And I think that's going to say a lot to where the Phoenix are. And, you know, with the way that that team is, I mean, like you really look at the situation Pontiac's in. And I think the Pontiac, I think Pontiac right now, they're a team on the, on the way up. And, I, under Coach Meyer, under Coach Myers, you know they're off to a good start. I mean, they're off to a really, really good start. And you know, could they be a factor in the in the league race? Absolutely. I mean, they they've got some. There is a 
there is a positive trend here when you look at Pontiac. So I think Pontiac's a team that I think that's trending up right now. A um, couple of teams that <coughs> are also like um, you kind of expected, you know, North Farmington, they had a really slow start against Detroit on you know, Martin Luther King. Um, <coughs> but a player, their transfer, Dylan Smith, um, he, he had a big game for them. Um, so when I look at North Farmington, um, you know, they're going to need more from their, from Landon Williams and Tyler Spratt, and I think they're going to get that. Um, but North Farmington, I think they got to play much better. Um, you know, obviously, I mean, like, can't rely on um, on on Smith to carry you. Um, and he's more than capable of doing that. And I know how he's played at Wall Lake Western. Um, but I just think, honestly, when you look at North Farmington right now, I would say they're trending up a little bit. But, you know, they got some concerns considering their starts. So that's a big-time concern um, going forward there with them. Um, when I look at teams that, um, you know, when I look at teams that are, like, in the middle right now, um, I would say right now a team in the middle to really watch. I mean, Ferndale's a team I still think, in my opinion, is trending up. You know, they had that loss to Birmingham Brother Rice. They knocked off Davison. Um, I don't think, I don't think Coach Juan Rickman's team is getting any love from the, um, state rankings in D2, despite the fact they were the Division II state champions, and they have a really good player in Trenton Roos. Um, Ethan Vineyard is a player to watch for sure for Ferndale. I know he was rated as the best freshman in the state, um, but I think it'll be interesting to see how Coach Rickman really puts Vineyard in, in how, how to, how to have him succeed. Um, that's a team that I think is trending up despite the one-on-one -on -one record um, that they have. I know they got a lot of other tough games coming up. So that's my take on Ferndale right now is, you know, that's the concern I have with them right now is they they're defensively, they're not as sound as they've been in pa in the year, in years past, but I kind of expected it, you know, kind of like having a very young team starting over from scratch. Not as easy as you think. I mean, it really isn't. Um, but I think that's a team that could be a scary team come March. Um, is the um, is the Eagles of Ferndale? Um, they could be a factor in the red this year, and I and I expect them to be a big factor in the division this year. Um, teams that I think that are in the middle right now, I pretty much would say um, I would put West Bluefield in this one, despite the 0-2 start. There's some concerns I have with West Bluefield. Um, Yes, they played a tough schedule. I mean, they lost to UD Jesuit by 373 to 70. But also, they lost to East Lansing 84 to 50. And to me, that that's a red alarm right there for me. I mean, honestly, when I look at the Lakers um, defensively, this team has allowed 78 and a half a game. That's not good. That doesn't win any games. And I know Coach on at Jordan very well. I mean... Bottom line is, for West Bluefield, they have got to fix their defensive woes. Because I'll tell you what, when you get in the red, you're going to see teams like North Farmington who can score in bunches, Ferndale can score in bunches. Adams, obviously, with the two guards, William G. and Peter Kardashian. Um, Adams is another team I'm really concerned about when I look at them. Um, Clarkston, we know their balance. I mean, like, you know, and then, and then there's Groves, of course. Groves is coming off that having to survive against Redford Thurston. Um, so there is some concerns when I look at West Bloomfield. And, you know, they got they got um Drew Wilson, their transfer from Bloomfield Hills um, in there. But I just think when you look at the problems that West Bloomfield has, it is not on the offensive side of the basketball. It is on the defensive side of the ball. Because you really look at the problems that West Bloomfield has, you know, albeit the teams that they're playing are very good. Don't get me wrong. UD Jesuit's a pretty good team under Coach Pat Conley. Um, and then you look at um, East Lansing. East Lansing's better than people think this year. I know East Lansing still got to play Seaholm this year, which is going to be very interesting um, considering how good we know how good that the, um, that the Spartans are. So when I look at... When I look at West Bluefield, I am really concerned about this team defensively because you cannot give up 78 and a half points a game. That's not winning basketball. 
That is not a good recipe for success. And to me, that is a big problem when you look at the Lakers. I mean, West Bloomfield, they've got some issues that they got to address. Um, and yeah, they're 0-2 right now, and they played a tough schedule. But they've got some things to really address. And, you know, especially on the defensive side of the basketball. It's not the offensive side of the basketball that I'm worried about with the Lakers. It's the defensive side of the ball. And I think that's a big concern I have with them going forward. Oak Park's another team I'm worried about when you look at the rec. Because they lost to Detroit Edison 72-58. Um, to me, it's defense. It's defense with Coach Duran Shepard's team. That is a big concern I have with with farming with um with Oak Park because this team has got a habit of having some lapses on this side of the basketball. That's a big concern I have is when it comes to defense. Um, similar situation in West Bloomfield. I'm really concerned about their defense. I mean, when you look at the Knights, if they can fix their defensive woes, I think they're going to be fine. But you know, they can't just give up 72 points and expect to win. You know, you got you to gotta score, but you got to defend people. And I think that's the problem I have with um, with West Bluebill and with Oak Park right now is their inability to defend people. And it showed. It showed in the games. Now, albeit the teams they played are really good teams. But I think West Bluebill and Oak Park, they could play much better defensively. And that's going to be a very interesting to watch, especially when you look at the red um, going forward. Um, another team that I think I've got some concerns about is Royal Oak. Now, why Royal Oak? They're 2-0. and The way that that team has been playing, playing some good basketball, but there were some times they, had, they trailed in some games. I mean, they trailed against Southfield Christian. Had to survive that one by eight, 47-39. And then against Cranbrook Kingswood. They exploded in the second half, but they were down 32-26 at halftime against Cranbrook Kingswood. And I watched that game and I watched I watched how that game was broadcast. And I was just going like, uh, okay, you know, I mean, like, you're looking you're, th- you're making Royal Oak look like they're like world beaters and all that, knocking off a good Cranbrook Kingswood team. Here's the thing about Cranbrook Kingswood. They are not a good team. So when you look at Kingswood, when you look at Royal Oak right now, the jury's still out on this team. Yes, they got Camden Clark. Yes, they got Dylan Hoffman. I want to know I want to know a lot more about Royal Oak when they play Seaholm. Because I'll tell you what, right now, Seaholm's going to give them a game. They're going to give them a game. And then I'd like to hear what Royal Oaks, Royal Oaks, um, you know, I watched the YouTube page of Royal Oak, you know, and I watched your basketball announced coverage and all that. I mean, like, I'll tell you what, there's going to be some tough games in the, in the future for Royal Oak that they're going to cover. I'll tell you what, when you look at the blue, you look at, I think Berkeley's going to be okay this year. I think Stony Creek's going to be okay this year. I think Oxford. It's going to be okay this year. Rochester's going to be okay this year. Pontiac's going to be okay this year. I mean, there's some tough games ahead. And if you think Brad Kramer Kingswood's good, you got a whole other thing coming. So, that's my take on Royal Oak. They got Seahome coming up. It's a big game for them. Big one. Jury's still out on this team. Worried about them defensively. Worried about Coach Aaron Smith's team defensively. I mean, there are times they look good, but the competition has not helped this team. It hasn't. Seaholm's going to be a, a leg up when it comes to competition. And that game is at Royal Oak. So I'm really curious to see if they broadcast that game. If they live stream that game. They should. It's going to be a test. It'd be a really good test. So we'll see what happens there with Royal Oak. I, I just think when I look at them, good start, 2-0, and but you really haven't been that tested yet. You know, Seaholm's going to come in here. We know what Seaholm's more than capable of. They're a scrappy team. They, they don't have a two-star player. 
but they know how to win games. They know how to win. So that's going to make this one really interesting. And when you look at Seaholm, the way that they're playing, they came up a tough loss to Wall Lake Western. 54-47. It was a hard-fought game. And then they survived the Avondale 43-41. Really good game. I mean, good defensive slugfest between two teams that I think are going to make some big strides this year. So when I look at when I look at Royal Oaks path, it's not going to get easy. When you look at, of course, what happened to them last year, off that torrid start, off that great start, but they hadn't really played anybody until they run, ran into Lake Orion and look what happened there. And then everything started falling off after that game. Everything started to fall up because Royal Oak was not tested in the non-conference. Now, I know Coach Aaron Smith has tested that team you know, as scheduled with the non-conference. But see, we're going to know a lot about them when they play Seal. We're going to know a lot about them. So we'll see what happens with Royal Oak. Um, Ferndale University has been really competitive, um, even though they've lost two straight games. Um, I think they're going to be fine under Coach Josh Nix. They're going to be fine. I ain't worried about Ferndale U. I, I really am. I really am not. They're going to be fine. Um, so other teams I'm concerned about, um, Stony Creek is, is one of the teams I'm really concerned about. There's a couple reasons why. I watched that game against Romeo where they, they fell 63 51. Um, they had some good, they looked, there were times they looked really good. There were some times, um, coach F Owen team. They look good. They look good at times, but this is a there's a difference between not having Trey Walker on the on the floor and having Trey Walker on the floor. There's a big difference. If Walker's on the floor, this team's really good. If he's in foul trouble, this team's got problems. So if you're Stony Creek, you're gonna have to really figure out how to keep Walker on the floor. Because obviously he's your best player, but you know, when shots don't fall, bad things happen. And when you look at that game against Romeo, Walker had to guard Aiden Tag, and that's not an easy matchup. Aiden Tag's a good player. He's a solid player. When I look at Romeo, Romeo's problem is not in the in the regular season. It come, That comes in the postseason. Because when you look at the postseason, it, I, I can't trust Romeo one second. I really can't. Because of... You know, they have that postseason checkered history. And that postseason checkered history involves his losses in the, either in the first round or in the district semifinals. They have not gotten out of that district. And when you look at that district that Romeo's in, you got three Rochesters in there. You have Utica Eisenhower in there. And, you, and then you have Utica Eisenhower and Utica in there. I still can't believe Utica Eisenhower lost to Utica. I mean, I, I, still, I still don't understand that. But they did. So, but back to Stony Creek. I mean, I think when you look at the Cougars, they have some concerns when Trey Walker's not on the floor. And Walker's like that, that, that stabilizer. He's like that stabilizer to a team that is really young. And Stony Creek's a very young team. I mean, yes, they got Jonah McKay, Tommaso Sinicola, um... But, you know, you look at, obviously, you have a lot of young players who played on JV last year up on varsity, and they're getting, this is their first taste of varsity basketball. And I've got some concerns. Now, they do open, they do play up Abigail coming up against Holy, um, Holy Family in Canada. That's going to be an interesting game. I don't know much about Holy Family Canada. I, I don't know. But. They got him to come there. So that should be really interesting. I mean, really interesting. Um, And then you look at Rochester's another team I've got some concerns. I mean, Max Moll scored 30 points against Troy Athens. Yes, Rochester lost that game 53-45. 
He was held to eight points against Lake Ori. He was held to eight points. And um and Luke Lyons, he had a nice game against the Dragons with 12 points. But where is their interior game? Where's Evan Crowley? Where's Jake Tandy been? That's the question I have for Coach Nick Cabola. Is where are your bigs? Where are your I mean, if you can get solid post production from your bigs, you don't have to rely uh it, it takes the pressure off Maul and um Lions. I mean, you know, I know Tand Tandy saw a lot of time last year. So did Evan Crow. He saw some time last year up on varsity. And I know Rochester's a young team. But you look at Rochester and say, okay, um, they're going to be better than people think, but right now they're struggling a little bit right now. And that's something they got to fix. That really is. Um, so Rochester, I do, I would put them in that concern category. Um, a little bit. I would put them in that concern category. To worry a little bit, and I think that's something to really look at with Rochester. Is I would put them in that category. Um, now let's look at Oxford. I mean, when you look at the Wildcats, um, I think with Oxford, the concern I have is, and this is what I talked about with Coach, um, with um, with Coach Fed at Media Day, um, uh, with Joe Fed Machorek at Media Day. Um, I said before the season, I said, your team looks a lot like Batman and Robin. I mean, you look at, of course, Batman and, Batman and Robin. Um, Jake Champagne plays the role of Batman. And the reason why I say this is you look at the points that he can put up. He can put up 20 points against both Lake Orion and Lapeer. Now, the question for me when I look at Oxford is who plays the role of Robin? Who plays the role of Robin? It's supposed to be Luke Stofan. But he was shut down in the Lake Oregon. He had 14 against the pier. Um, and Oxford had to survive that game 50-47. Um, you got to wonder, where are the Katies? Where are both Katies? Can they give you production? That's the question. I mean, Oxford needs production from the interior. I mean, Jonah Lundberg is one of the guys that I'm looking at right now. If he can produce for this team, then it takes the pressure off Champagne. It focuses people not to just focus on it. Because right now, when you look at Oxford's problem, when you have one player taking the shots instead of like playing the ultimate team game, that's a serious problem because every defense is going to focus on you. And he deserves a lot of attention. Champagne does. I mean, it was similar when Trey Townsend was there at Oak when Trey Townsend was there at Oxford. Now he's at Oakland University. Um so now Champagne is facing that same, same dilemma. You know, the star player, you gotta do what you gotta do. You maybe you're doing a little too much. I mean, that's the question Oxford's got right now. They got to fix that. And when you look at the schedule coming up, and then especially when you look at your district where you've got Grand Blank in there, they're coming off a tough loss to Waterford Mott. Um, Davison, you know how good they are. <laughs> and then there's Lapeers, and there's Lapeer, better than you think. And then there's Holly. Holly's tough. I mean, they got they got Anthony Simmons there. They got a really good guard there. I mean, Coach D.J. Hart's got something there. Despite the fact they're 1-1 one one, coming off a tough loss to Lakeland. But, I'm telling you, that district Oxford's in is brutal. Really is. So, I'm really concerned about Oxford. Um, I would put Oxford in that category of concern. Adams, I mentioned, um, Adams with them, they've got to find an interior guy, especially for William G. and um, Peter Kardashian. You can't just rely on two of those, on both of them. Yes, they're both very good, but if your coach, Isaiah Novak, 
you're going to have to find who is going to be that interior guy. That's the big question I have with Adams. Who's that interior guy going to be? Because if they, if they find that interior guy, takes the pressure off of, of G and Kardashians. You take that pressure off them, that'll help Adams out big time. Really will. So I put Adams right now in a patience category. Um, Clarkston, really impressed with what they did. Balanced scoring. Um, Peyton Fitzsimmons had a nice game. Um, they're just, they're not a team that just relies a lot on John Cole to carry. Cole's a heck of a player, but they got size. They got height. Um, I mean, they look good against Sterling Heights. They got a tough one coming up. Um, I got to figure out who they got, but they got to go on the road. Then they got Lake Orion on Friday. And that's not going to be easy for Coach Tim Wasilic. But I would put Clarkston medium right now. I would put medium concern for them. Um, you know, I've, I mean, I got this little chart, you know what I mean, I'm, I'm working on, um, where I think teams are are trending up, teams I'm worried about, teams I really need to see. Um, and then, of course, there is, um, and then, of course, we go to the white. Harper Woods is the team I'm really concerned about because they looked okay against Detroit Renaissance. Their defense was not very good in that game. Um. And then they played against um against nobody Detroit Catholic Central was absolutely destroyed. They were destroyed in that game. I got big concerns with Coach Tawan Porter's team. Despite all the senior experience, they're probably gonna say, well, I mean, we have a couple players that are coming back from the Division Four State Championship football team. Yeah, and that's fine. But you gotta at least you gotta defend. You got to defend. And I'm very concerned about Harper Woods, especially the way that that team defends. I mean, that team really scares me when it comes to how they defend. Um, Bloomfield Hill is another team I'm afraid. Because you look at that team, the fact that they only scored 23 points against Wald Lake Central, that is alarming. That is really alarming. 23 points as a team. That's frightening. That's not good. I mean, that's something they got to fix. I mean, the Blackhawks, I'm really concerned about with this team right now. Because they've got to score. I mean, they lost. Yes, they lost all their starting lineup. They lost everybody. You know, you lose Drew Wilson, the transfer. You lose Noah Adamsich. That's a tough to replace. You lose Brandon Dewellen. Um, You lose, I mean, like, you lose a lot of key players on that team. There's going to be some pressure on you. But for a team to score 23 points opening night, that's a concern. <coughs> Big concern. So that's something to really, really watch for at Bloomfield Hills. I am really worried about that team. I'm really worried about the Blackhawks right now. Really am. Um, Farmington, I'll tell you what, with them, with everything that's been going on, the off the court things, um, the distractions that this team's faced, um, they had a nice outing against Savoni Stevenson despite losing by six in that game. But <laughs> I think when you look at F Farmington, they're going to be okay. I think, you know, you have Greg Gray's there. Jordan Turner there. You got Derek Osborne there. I mean, uh, uh, Derek Coltrane there. I mean, like, I think for Coach Byron Johnson, they're going to be fine. I mean, really not pressing the panic button on Farmington. They got a very difficult matchup coming up with Dort Farmington, which that might not be go very well for them. Um, even though they're at home. Um... It's going to be, a, I think for Farmington, it's going to be, they're going to be fine. I mean, I think they're going to be okay. I mean, they do got a tough schedule coming up. But for for me with Farmington, it just comes down to is, can this team figure out, can they adjust? That is the big question. Can they adjust to the new system? That's the big question I have with them. 
So Farmington, I I would put them in the medium column. Um, I think they're going to be okay. As long as Grayson Turner carries that team, I think they're going to be fine. Um, and then there's Groves. I mean, Groves is a team in the red that, you know, they're off to a 2-0 and start. Had to survive against um, Redford Thurston. That is a concern for me when I look at when I look at um, Groves. I mean, yes, you have Simpson and Gibson. Both both them have been off to good starts thus far. Um, Drew Hubbard has been playing okay for them. Um, actually, Paul Hubbard's been playing well for them. Um, I think if you know, they got to get some production in the interior. They can do that. I think they're going to be fine. I mean, Coach Mark West has done a really nice job with that team, with that program. But like I said, the schedule gets difficult for them going forward. And I think with Groves, that's going to be where I think they've got some big issues they got to fix. And I think with the Falcons, it's going to be a team where I think they're going to have to, they're going to have to fix some things. And if they don't, they're in some trouble. And, you know, and playing in the red, that's not going to be easy for them. So we'll see what happens with them. We will see what happens with them, um, you know, with with them. Um, Troy Athens. Um, with Athens, they're out to a 2 0 start. Looked good against Rochester and a hard fought 53 45 win against them. Can't really judge them in their 83 to 8. Blowout win against Waterford um, Oakdale Prep. Um, I don't know why Coach Dave Scott was playing them. I really don't know why. Because is that going to get you any better playing them? I mean, you're going to get the blowout win. But still, 86-8. to eight, That's 78 points. And the fact they couldn't score 10 points, that, that's mind-boggling. But why? Why? I mean, Manny Robinson had a nice game for um has been playing off to a good start. But to me, I don't think they should ever play that game again. Against um Waterford Oakdale Park. They should never do that again. Because is that gonna get you better? I mean, is that gonna get you better? I mean, that's the big question. That really is the big question when I look at with um with Troy Athens, I mean, I think they're going to be fine. But still, I mean, like, we'll see what happens. We're going to see what happens with um, Troy Athens. Um, but they're off to a good start, 2-0 and start. Um, but in my opinion, you know, I think they should never play Waterford um, Oakdale Prep again. I mean, my goodness. My goodness. So I was really disappointed there. Um... And then there is Lake Orion. Um, when you look at the Dragons start, they're off to a 2-0 and start. Um, knocked off Oxford. Um, and then knocked off Rochester. Zach Parks fits right into this with this system. He fits right in with this, with, with this team. You look at what he brings to this team. Effort. Rebounding. He can score. He's the complete package. And, you know, he transferred in from Brandon. Um, Brandon really struggled the last two years with him. But when he came here to Lake Orion, um, Lake Orion has really benefited from his arrival to Lake Orion. He re they benefited. I mean, you pair him with a guy like Ryan Washlow, who's been playing really well lately. Um, Quay Fly has been solid rebounding the ball. Nick Yalbin, when he's been in there, he's played really good. Um, and then, of course, you've had plays from Ethan Sharkey. Of course, Ethan Sharkey's had some big games. He had 17 against Oxford. Um, and then you have um, Gabe Scott's been a solid point guard for this team. Um, but Coach Jose Andrade said this is still a young group. Long way to go. I get it. I really get it. I mean, you look at Lake Orion right now. I mean, like, we're going to know a lot about them this week. They got two really tough games coming up. I mean, they got Pontiac Norton Prep, which is going to be really interesting. 
Um, considering Notre Dame Prep was a Sweet 16 team last year. Um, and then they play um, Clarkston. And we know how good Clarkston's been as a program. I mean, this could be a very interesting game of two teams that are balanced. And, you know, I think both sides are very balanced. Um, so when I look at the Dragons, and this could be a district preview as well because both teams are in the same district. Now, albeit you got Avondale in there. Um, Avondale, we know. I mean, like, Avondale's a team that I think, um, I'll talk Avondale in a minute here, but I think, honestly, when you look at Lake Orion right now, they're in a nice spot right now. But they've got to keep growing and getting better. If they can do that, who knows what will happen with this team? Who knows? I mean, like, I think Lake Orion's a team that really, they can do damage. They can do some damage. I mean, I've called this team the great unknown. And there's a reason why they are the great unknown. Because you don't know what you're going to get from them. They don't have a true star. You look at the last two years. You look at Alden Ritt. You look at DJ Morrow and Blake Liddell last year. And Kevin Tobe. I mean, you got some new emerging emerging kids in the, in the, um, in the wings here. You look at players like... You know, you look at, obviously, we talk Parks, we talk Fly, we talk um, Rochelle. Um, MJ Long could be an interesting player to watch. I mean, we'll see. But Coach Andradis mentioned a long way to go with this team. And there is. So, that's on the watch for. But Lake Orion right now, I probably would put them in the medium category right now. Avondale, you know, when I look at Avondale, I mean, I think there is, I think Avondale will be fine. I mean, yes, they do have some defensive lapses. Um, but, no, offensive lapses, my bad. Um, but when they, they played a good game against Seaholm, Seaholm's going to help them, I think, in the long run. So when I look at Avondale, I think they're going to be fine. I'm not pressing the panic button on Coach Jared Thomas' team yet. Really, I'm not. So when I look at Avondale, um, you know, for them to be in that type of defensive game against teams that are very, against teams that like the scrap, that says something right there. Really does. So, I think Ferndale, and also, I think Avondale will be fine. I, I think the Yellow Jackets will be fine. I'm not pressing the panic button on them. Um, they're going to be okay. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I know Coach Jared Thomas, you know, he's going to, he's going to get that program turned around quick. They're going to be fine. I'm not pressing the panic button on Avondale. Yeah, I'm really not. So, that's my take on the boys. Um, you know, when you look at all 24 teams, um, breaking them all down. Um, teams that are... <coughs> there's some teams that I'm really curious to see. Teams I'm really concerned to see. Um, teams that I think could, um, you know, could make some noise. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Now we go to the girls. And I mentioned this during the preview, sh preview podcast. As when you look at the divisions. And you, you got to look at, of course, okay. Who's the early favorite in the division? Who, who is the team that you least expect to make some noise? I mean, when you look at the, the red this year. I know a lot of people haven't talked much about Lake Ori. And I think when you look at the Dragons, especially the way that that team lost nine seniors a year ago. Um, but when you look at Lake Ori now, I think I learned a little bit about this team. Um, Nevea Wood's going to be a force for this team. Nevea Wood's going to be a force. Um, Izzy Walensky's back to full health. Um... <laughs> You got, of course, when you look at um, Ellie Britt starting to starting to play better. Um, you got um, Charlotte Pavlovsky has really has, has taken some strides. Um, Ryan Palachek, Lexi Strohshine, they've taken. I mean, they've been really um solid. Um, I think Lake Orient's a sleeper in the red. I really do. I mean, you look at obviously you look at West Bloomfield. You know they're going to be tough to beat. You have both Davis sisters, Destiny Washington, Kendall Hendricks, 
Um, their bench is more deeper than they were. It was in years past. Um, the last something to really watch for there. Rochester obviously with Alice Max. Guard situation still a concern there for Coach Bill Thurston. Stony Creek under Coach Columbus Williams. Um, obviously you got Sarah LaPrairie there. You got um, I mean you got Izzy Avaj there. You got Merrick Schlaubach there. Um, Stony Creek's an interesting team to watch. Um, you know I'm curious to see how the transition's going to be with them. Um, and then you look at, of course, you have Oxford there. I mean, Oxford's a team that, you know, they do return three start. I mean, you got a couple starters back here. Um, you got, um, Allison Huffstadler. Um, you have, um, you got Soapy Rob. You got Lexi Yankee. You got Brady Elling there. Um, Peyton Richter's there. And then, of course, you got Emma Beggs, um, which I think can make some noise there. Um, Clarkston. When you look at the Wolves, I mean, Eliana Roback. I mean, you look at Emily Valencia. You look at, and then, of course, this emerging freshman we've been hearing a lot about in Brooklyn Colbert. I mean, I'm, I know what Colbert's done in the middle school ranks. I know what she's done in the summer. I mean, you know, she could be a girl that could do some damage this year. But I have some questions with Clarkston. I didn't mention it in the preview. I didn't mention it on air. I didn't mention it in the blog either. But I have some concerns with Coach Aaron Goodenow's team. There is some question marks. Now, when you look at that district, you know, with Clarkston, you know, Lake Orion Clarkson is going to be very interesting. Very interesting. Go either way. Really could. Um, and then in the white, um, when you look at the white, um, Royal Oak, I think, is the team to beat in that division, considering that they got a lot. They got everybody back from that team that really, um, you know, that really had, um, you know, that took some lumps. They won some games. Should have won the game against Detroit Mumford last year. Um, they got a, a heck of a district where I think it looks winnable. Even though they got to go through Warren Cousineau, which I think is going to be really interesting. Um, also, Groves is in there. <laughs> I think Groves will be better this year for Coach Allison Heidi. Um, I mean, I'm really curious to see how J.C. Roy plays. I mean, Sierra Rocco's the best player over there at Groves, but J.C. Roy, I think, is going to be the X Factor over there at Groves. I really do. Um, but I think, I think Groves could be a player in this division. Harper Woods is hard for me to trust them. Yes, he got Cecilia Peterson back. He got others back as well. Um, but I got some questions with Harper Woods. I mean, do they have enough depth? Program strength is a concern I have for them. They got a new coach in there. They get loyal, to loyal tone. Um, it's on the blog at segment forty six fifty at blogspot.com. Um, but they've got some questions. I think the Pioneers do have some serious questions this year. Um, when I look at them. Um, see home, you know, is scrappy. Um, Addie Flynn's going to be a girl to watch for with the Maples. Um, I think Seaholm's a team that could make some noise. They could do well. Um, we'll see. And there's Bloomfield Hills. Um, uh, Bloomfield Hills, I really like Brianna Young. I really like what she's done. Now, albeit they didn't have Ruby Smith. I know Ruby Smith's been hurt. I know their point guard's out for the year with an ACL. Um, and, but when you look at the Blackhawks, um, I really like the direction that they're going. They're on the trend word up. Um, Brianna Young has played really well for Coach Kristen Massey. Really has. And I think when you look at, when you look at Bloomfield Hills this year, they're probably the team in that division that is your sleeper. Um, uh, because, you know, you don't know what you're going to get from them. Not a lot of teams are going to match up with Ruby Smith either when she gets back from her injury. Ruby Smith is a really tough basketball player. She is really tough. Also a smart player as well. And you put her with Ashley Fortner, um, Brianna Young, as mentioned, she's going to really help make, she's going to really help things, especially open up that, open up the, um, the shooting lanes for Bloomfield Hills this year. I mean, Bloomby, there's a reason why I think Bloomfield Hills is one of the favorites in the district this year. 
in their district. I, I think they're going to do really well because they have that inside-out combination. You can put Ashley Fortner and Ruby Smith, and you have Brianna Young as your athletic player. She, they're talented. They're really talented. She's a really talented player. I'll tell you that much right now. Kristen Massey's got a program going over there. Really does. Um, now let's go from the what's going on from the white to the blue. Um, yeah, this one's interesting because I'm looking at this division and yeah, Southfield Arson Tech is favored. I mentioned it in the previous show. Um, can I trust this team on the defensive side of the floor is a big question. They're going to score a ton of points. They're going to score a bunch of points. But I don't trust this team one bit defensively. I mean, yes, their defense can turn to, to, turn to offense real quick. But if this team gets up at least 90 points a game, that's a problem. I know Coach Akita Coltrane um, really well. And they better know defense real, well, real quick over there because – to me, that's going to be their ultimate downfall is their defense. Because they have the offense to win games. It's, it's the other side of the ball. It's keeping teams from scoring. That's the question I have for Coach Chiquita Coltrane's team this year. Really is. Um, and then there is, and then there is, um, and then you look at Troy. Troy, in my opinion, I think is the most complete team. Because Yes, they got a new coach in Laura Guzman. They got a nice blend of youth and experience on this team. I mean, Carly Higginbottom's going to be solid. Reagan Zider's solid. That Diamond Prince is Diamond Prince. Um, they got Victoria Segan, <coughs> Allie Mantuza, um, Carla Strakronis. Um, I think Troy could be if I had to t if I could trust. If I had to trust a team right now between Troy and A&T right now, it's Troy. Because I think Troy's the most completed team in this division. Now, Berkeley could have a strong case about this. I think Berkeley is also a complete team as well. But for me with Southfield, I just, I just, they're athletic, very talented, quick. But when it comes to a defensive slugfest, who am I going to trust? I'm going to trust Troy. I'm going to also trust you know, I'm going to trust Troy in this because they have a proven coach in Lord Guzman, proven experience. You know, Troy took a lot of lumps in the red. They've dropped down two divisions. So has Southfield. They've also dropped down two divisions. Both took a lot of lumps in the red last year. But when I look at, you know, programs from a program strength perspective, I trust Troy. Um, when I look at, Yes, Southfield, you can put them athletically. Um, and I know a lot of people are going to probably pick Southfield in the media as a favorite to win that division. But I think Troy and Berkeley are going to give them props. Maybe Adams. I think Adams is going to be better this year. Um, I think that, um, but when I look at Berkeley, I really like Malvin Nolan. I really like her. I like Avery Wintergarden. Um, Haley Kirk was a solid player. <laughs> Um, you know, when you look at, when you look at the Bears this year, Coach Clay Shaver has done a excellent job. He's done an excellent job on social media. Um, I don't know if he copied off the LA Chargers thing. I think he did. I'm not sure. But, but I think the Bears are going to be a solid team this year. I think Berkeley's a team to really watch for. Adams is another team I'm high on. Um, I like Fade Zolas a lot. Um, they got others as well. I'm really high on Samantha Blaine is a solid player. Um, now, albeit, yeah, they lost Morgan McPherson. She transferred to Avondale. But I think Adams will be solid for Coach Joe Malberg. I think Adams will be a team to really watch for this year. Um, it's another step in taking, it's another step for them. And I think Adams is a team to really, really watch for this season. Troy Athens, the injury bug, um, that really derailed them last year. Um, he returned some key players. Um, Alex Link um, is one I'm really high on for Coach J.C. Klump. Um, there's others on that team I'm high on. For me with Troy Athens, it comes down to is can they stay healthy. 
That's the big question for Coach J.C. Columbus. Can they stay healthy? Farmington um, lost a lot of talent from a year ago. You have a new coach in Allie Nolak taking over. Um, I think Troy could be a team to really, really watch for. Because I think the Colts are a team that, no, I, I, the Falcons are a team that could really do some damage this year. I think that F Farmington could do some damage. I mean, now they could struggle a little out the get-go, but who knows? We're going to see what happens with Farmington. But I think Farmington's a team that I think it can make some noise this year. I really do. And then there's the goal. I mean, Ferndale and Avondale could be battling for the top of the division all year long. Um, Ferndale University, Pontiac, and Oak Park. Um, Avondale, obviously, they do have many weathers on that pro in that on that team, along with the uh, Morgan McPherson, a uh, Madison many weathers. Uh, Morgan McPherson's also also transferred in there from Adams. Um, Coach Roy Christman's, you know, I know what he's trying to do over there. Um. And I know Avondale's a team that, you know, they're going to want to go up and down. I know how bad they want to get out of the division. Um, I think they got a shot. We'll see. And then there's Ferndale. Ferndale's a team that I think could really do some damage this year. The question I have for Coach Keith Paris is the games. Can they book more games this year? You know, can they play at least like um, if they can get, the, get to the max amount, which is 22, they can play. That's going to help this program in the long run. And they got to build program strength. That's something that I got to see with, with Avondale is, you know, with Ferndale is program strength. It's the same thing with Avondale as well. Program strength, both sides. <laughs> if they can do that and build for not just this year, but like two, three, four, five years from now, you know, then I think that's going to help them. So we'll see what happens. With both teams, I mean, but I think both Ferndale and Avondale could be in line for some really good years. Postseason-wise, I'm really worried about Ferndale because they're in that district of Birmingham, Detroit Country Day. That's very frightening right there. Um, and then Avondale, obviously, they're in that district with Bloomfield Hills and Seaholm. Um, that could be really interesting there. Forgot to mention North Farmington in the blue. Um, I on the white. Um, North Farmington. Um, they could struggle this year. Yes, they got. I see a jihad, um, but I just think that the Raiders, you know, they could be in for a long year for Coach Michael Allen, especially with all the talent they lost last year. So that's something to really watch for with them. So I forgot to mention North Farmington, so I apologize to the Raiders um, for, um, you know, when I look at the divisions this year. Um, but back to the gold. Um, Oak Park, I'm really curious to see how they do this year um, under Coach, um, Coach Thompson. Um, um, we'll see what happens there. We'll, it's Tyrone Washington, I think, is the coach here. I gotta, I gotta go in my um, notes here and figure that out. But, but Oak Park, they should be better this year. Ferndale University, um, I think they'll be much improved this year under Coach Brianna Rowe. Um, I think they're gonna be a team that could really make some noise this year. Um, I know they've been working hard, as um, Coach Rowe told me on at media day. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what, what um, Ferner University has, and I think they're going to be solid. And then last but not least, Pontiac. Um, when you look at the Phoenix, really rough year for Coach Corey la last year. Um, and you look at, of course, playing seven freshmen, that's not easy to do because of, you know, you're having to go through the learning process, the learning tools, trying to build a program that's really difficult to do. Um, and then your district is going to be really difficult this year. So when I look at Pontiac this year, they got a lot of a lot of girls that saw a ton of arts experience. Um, and I have Shaw's their best player. I think Shaw's going to have a big year. I think Pontiac could surprise some people this year um, in division. But when they get in the postseason, that could be more of a difficult task, especially when you look at teams like Lake Orion and Clarkson in there, which, which they're, they play in the red. Both teams do tough division. Um... I think, you know, for Pontiac, it could be a really interesting experience um, for them this season. So that'd be something to really watch for when you look at the Phoenix this season is can they take the next step? And I think that I think they're going to do that this year. I really do. I think Corey Lett's going to have a really nice year. They'll probably, I think they can win maybe at least seven, eight games this year. I really do. So we'll see what happens.
All right, we're going to sign it off here. Make sure you follow the blog at 2nd at blogspot.com for the latest information around the OA. And we'll see you